Hi guys, here we are going to learn how to solve a system of linear congruence of the type x is congruent to a mod m, x is congruent to b mod n, where the moduli m, n, etc. are not necessarily relatively prime. What do we mean by such a system? Let's see. If we are given a system with congruences a1 x is congruent to b1 mod m1, a2x is congruent to b2 mod m2, a3x is congruent to b3 mod m3. We can have many more congruence. Let's take only these three. So if when we take the modulus or the moduli pairwise, that is m1, m2, m2, m3, m3, m1, and their GCD may not necessarily B1. Then the Chinese remainder theorem cannot be applied. So how do we solve such a system? The condition for solving such a system is that the GCD of the moduli taken pairwise should divide the difference of right hand side. For example here if we take the first two congruents then the GCD of M2, M1 should divide the difference B2, B1. Let's see. GCD of M1, M2 should divide the difference of B2, B1. GCD of M2, M3, when this pair is taken, should divide B3, B2, the difference of B3 and B2. And the GCD of M3, M1 should divide the difference of B3, B1. If this division holds, then the solution exists and it is unique. The method which we use to solve such a system is iterative in nature and there is no direct formula. So you have to remember when moduli are pairwise relatively prime, this method can be used in place of Chinese remainder theorem. We will show this at the end using an example. Let's see some examples to check whether our system is solvable or not. If we are given a system with two congruence, x is congruent to 2 mod 5, x is congruent to 1 mod 10, we see that the GCD of 10 and 5 is 5. And this 5 does not, this GCD does not divide the difference of 1 and 2. We can take either 2 minus 1 or 1 minus 2. Either way, it is fine. So since this division does not hold, solution does not exist. In another example, where we have a system, x is congruent to 3 mod 3, x is congruent to 6 mod 6, we see the GCD of 6 and 3 is 3, and 3 divides the difference of the right hand side, 6 minus 3, so the solution exists. Another thing to note, if we have a system with two congruence, x is congruent to A mod M, X is congruent to B mod N, where the GCD of M and N is not 1, that is they are not relatively prime. Then we have a solution if and only if the GCD of M, N divides A minus B. We generalize this for more congruences in the system. So, here we will show how this condition GCD divides is true. To understand, we will start with the first congruence we take. Let's go back. X is congruent to A mod M and we write X is equal to A plus MT. And we'll substitute this X value in the second congruence. This gives us A plus MT is congruent to B mod N. Now if we take the A on the other side, we get MT is congruent to B minus A. You know that for a congruence to have a solution, the GCD of M and N should divide B minus A. And this is what we were talking about. What is the method for sol uh, solving such a system? We start with any one congruence of the system. 
but it is good to take that congruence which has the highest or the largest moduli. This modulus, this helps in reducing our calculations. So in the next step, you take the next largest modulus and carry on. Let's start with an example. If we are given a system with two congruence x is congruent to 6 mod 5 and x is congruent to 1 mod 15, we see the GCD of 5 and 15 divides the difference of 1 minus uh, 1 and 6. So the solution exists. What we do? We will start with the second congruence which has a larger modulus and we write x minus 1 upon 15 is u. This u is nothing but some variable we've taken and get x is equal to 1 plus 15u. We substitute this x from equation 1 and put it in the first congruence. This gives us 1 plus 15u is congruent to 6 mod 5 or 15u is congruent to 5 mod 5. We've brought the 1 from the left hand side and get this. So 15u minus 5 upon 5 gives us v or we get the Diophantine equation 15u minus 5 v is equal to 5. We can divide all over by 5. This gives us equation 2. Solving this by the method known to us, we get our initial solution as u0 is 1, v0 is 2 and the general solution is u is 1 plus t, v is 2 plus 3t. Although we just need u. Now we will substitute this u in our first equation and equation 1 we get x is equal to 16 plus 15t. So if we give different values to t, 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2, we will be getting infinite solutions. As a particular case, if we take t to be 0, 1 and minus 1, we get three values of x, 16, 31, 1. If we put them in the system, we'll see our congruences in the system satisfy these values. Let's take another example. Here, we are given x is congruent to 4 mod 8, x is congruent to 6 mod 6. GCD of 8 and 6 is 2, which divides the difference of 6 and 4. Solution exists. To solve, we start with the first congruence, which has a larger modulus, and we write x is equal to 4 plus 8u. We wrote that here. Now, call this equation 1. This we put in our second congruence and we get when x is equal to 4 plus 8u is congruent to 6 mod 6, we get 8u is congruent to 2 mod 6. This gives us an equation, again a Diophantine equation, 8u minus 6v is 2. We can divide by 2 and when we solve, we get our Initial values 1 and 1 and general solution comes out to be 1 plus 3t. We will not elaborate much on this. Again we need only u so we put that in our equation 1 and we get the solution as x is 12 plus 24t where t is some variable which takes values 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 etc. By taking some particular values of t, we can show that x comes out to be 12, 36, minus 12, and they all satisfy the system. We can even write our x is equal to 12 plus 24t as x is congruent to 12 mod 24, and all those x which are congruent to 12 will also be a solution. We'll move on to an example where we have three congruence in the system and we will use the iterative method. So here we see that we take two moduli at a time pairwise and we'll check whether they divide the difference of the right hand side. So 6 and 8, their GCD is 2 and 2 divides 2 minus 4. 
8 and 7, their GCD is 1 and 1 divides 1 and 2. Now let's take 7 and 6, their GCD is 1 and 1 divides 1 and 4. So the system has a solution. You must have noticed it is not necessary that the GCD of each pair is not 1. That is, they it's not necessary. Some of them are 1. Here the GCD of 7 and 6 is 1. But GCD of 6 is 8 is 2. Even if one of them is not 1, we use this iterative method. Take the congruence with the largest modulus 8 and write x is equal to 2 plus 8u. We put this in our congruence. x is congruent to 1 mod 7 as 7 was the next largest modulus. And this x when substituted gives us 8u is congruent to minus 1 mod 7. We get again a Diophantine equation 8u minus 7v is equal to minus 1. So first we write this as a linear combination 8 and 7 are linear are relatively prime so we write 8 and 7 as a linear combination of GCD but the right hand side was minus 1 so we multiply by a minus 1 and we get u0 is minus 1. So u comes out to be minus 1 plus 7w and v is minus 1 plus 8w. We put this u minus 1 plus 7w and substitute this value in equation 1. This will give us x is equal to minus 6 plus 56w. So substitute the x which we've got here in equation 2 in our third congruence which was left. Because that congruence is also a part of the system and it has to be involved. So we get 56w is congruent to 10 mod of 6 and this gives us 56w minus 6k is equal to 10. If we divide by 2 all over we get 28w minus 3k is equal to 5. Solving gives us a Diophantine equation and here w naught is 5, the initial solution. w comes out to be 5 plus 3t. If we substitute this w in our second equation, we get x is equal to 274 plus 168t. For different values of t, we get infinite solutions. We have seen how we use iterative method. We have an alternative method also for solving such system. So here we have an example where again you see that 10 and 15, they are not relatively prime. 15 and 9, they are not relatively prime, but 9 and 10 are. So we use another method. Here what we do, we will first check whether the system is solvable or not. So we see the GCD of 10, 15 which is 5 and 5 divides 10 minus 5. GCD of 15 and 9 is 3 that divides the difference of 7 and 10. GCD of 9 and 10 is 1 and 1 divides 7 minus 5. So the solution exists. We'll write now each congruence as a system of congruence. So x is congruent to 5 mod of 2 into 5. This we have split. 10 we've written as 2 into 5. And we'll write it as x is congruent to 5 mod 2 and x is congruent to 5 mod of 5. Come to the second congruence. Here we have x is congruent to 10 mod of this 15 is written as 3 into 5 and split it as a system x is congruent to 10 mod 3, x is congruent to 10 mod of 5. Now come to the third congruence. Here we have 9 as the modulus. 9 we just write as 3 square. Look at these congruences. We have different moduli. We have 2, 5, 3, a power of 3 and again modulus 5. We will segregate them. So look at the congruences which have 2 as the modulus. So we have only one congruence with modulus 2. So we keep it aside. 
Then come to modulus 5. There are two congruence with modulus 5, but they both are the same. Because if you replace this 5 by its residue mod 5, this will be 0. If I reduce this uh, 10 by its residue mod 5, again we get a 0. So we will write them as a single congruence. And then we have two congruence, one with modulus 3, other one with a power of 3. Out of the two, we will pick the one which has a greater power. Now, after this selection, here we write them together. So just see, these two were nothing but the same congruence because we had reduced them by uh, 10 and 5 by the residues. And out of the two, we took the one with the higher power. So we have now a system, the one which had a modulus 2, the other one which had modulus 5, because they both were same, we took just one. And the third one, we took out of the two which had a power. 3 square we wrote as 9. The moduli here, when taken pairwise, are all relatively prime. GCD of 2 and 5 is 1. GCD of 5 and 9 is 1. GCD of 9 and 2 is 1. So we can use the Chinese remainder theorem. What have we done? We have reduced the original, our original system to a form where Chinese remainder theorem can be used. So here we take these values and see the solution comes out to be 115 mod of 90. 90 is nothing but the LCM of 2, 5 and 9. Here, the 115 can be replaced by its modulus mod 90. Another thing you notice, we have not taken N2 and this is guys N3. Just let me correct. This is N2. It's uh, no, N2 I didn't take. I took N3. So, C1, C2, C3, N1. N2 we didn't take. We took N3 to be 10. N1 bar is 1. N3 bar is 1. The inverse. And N2 bar we didn't take. Because C2 is 0. So, we don't need them. Because that product C2, N2, N2 bar will in any case be 0. Lastly, we'll do an example where we have x is congruent to 1 mod 3, x is congruent to 4 mod 5, and x is congruent to 6 mod 7. See, all these moduli are relatively prime when taken pairwise. So, we can always use Chinese remainder theorem, but we can, we have an option. We can use the iterative method also. Let's try the iterative method. Both ways, you'll get the same answer. We'll again start with the congruence which has the largest modulus and we write x is 6 plus 7 t dash. For a change, we've taken the variable to be t dash. Now we put this x in this congruence which has the next largest modulus. And we will see on simplifying, we'll get t dash is congruent to minus 1 mod 5. You can replace this 7 by its residue mod 5, which will give us 2. 2 can be cancelled as 2 is relatively prime to 5. We are using cancellation law. So this gives us t dash is minus 1 plus 5. t2 dash is minus 1. We replace by its modulus mod 5 and we write 4. This, when we put t dash in our equation 1, we get x as 34 plus 35 t2 dashes and this will be nothing but 35 t2 dashes is minus 33 mod of 3. Solve this for t2 dashes. You will see t2 dashes comes out to be congruent to 0 mod 3. Because we have a 0, we can write t2 dashes is nothing but 0 plus 3 t. And when this t2 dash is put in our second equation, because any variable which we have assumed ourselves has to be replaced. When we put, we get x is 34, 34 plus 
t2 dashes is replaced by 3t and this is the solution we get x is 34 plus 105t go on giving different values to t we get infinite solutions thank you for watching